Hello students, welcome to EduSet. Today's session is all about we will know how to write the recurrence relation. What is recurrence relation? Once we know, then how many types of recurrence relations are there? Then what are the methods to uh, used? What are the methods used to help us to give a solution for the recurrence relation? Now, the recurrence relation you can check. Uh, it's a it's a definition. As to the definition, the recurrence relation is a method uh, which other equation you can say mathematical equation which will be derived by us from a recurrence a relation from a recurrence uh, or you can say from a recursion uh, a recursive method using of recursive method or recursion is there in a code then only we can write a method that method helps us what should be the time complexity of the program to find the time complexity of find the complexity of the program we are actually modeling the uh, recurrence or recursive function okay because we cannot say directly how many times it is running or like uh, we even don't know how it is running we know we are using uh, for recursion the data structure we are using is stack we know that one in our background it is using we can say the recursion is using we can say the auxiliary space it is taking is n that we studied in the previous lectures that term we can say it's auxiliary space why because stack is used on the number of index for the stack that you know is suppose n so in that case you can tell the space complexity is the auxiliary space complexity is n and it depends on the code what are the codes that you have written but auxiliary space is not constant because of the recursion one and the recursion is using the data structure stuff that's why auxiliary space is n that in a previous video, it, uh, previous lecture, it is there. Our target is how recurrence relation is written. Then we know recursion function is written, and we don't know how how many times it is running. What is the base condition? If you are writing everything in a certain way, that equation is said to be recursion, a uh, recurrence relation. Okay. So to solve this recurrence relation, we are having four methods. One is iteration method. A reiteration method second one is recursion tree method third one is substitution method fourth one is master theorem or master method okay in this four uh, it will be read in the next chapter in the next videos okay so iteration method uh, in general it's just a type of iterations that we read the number of times okay if anything is new that you found uh, like you know it's, it's suppose unknown function is you got the unknown function that unknown function you find the value by substituting that one with the, the initial function like this we will read in future you will check the uh, videos next the recursion tree method here we are actually trying to find the tree structure from the tree structure we are going to find the cost of each nodes and the number of nodes there out of this we will find the time complexity after adding the cost of leaf nodes or you can say the cost assumed or cost by the leaf nodes plus the sum of all intermediate nodes okay now substitution method substitution method as for the core men there in divide and conquer approach you can check there there in substitution method uh, we are first going for the guess to prove that whether guess is true or not we are going to prove it using the mathematical induction okay for proving the guess is correct or not we are using the mathematical induction this is how the substitution method works next is master theorem for master theorem uh, you need to remember the template then out of the template there are cases like cases uh, the template is all about the mathematical equation these are the prerequisites things that I'm saying the introductory uh, thing of like how you are going to solve these are the solutions basically master theorem uh, you have to remember the cases based on the cases you are directly applying the cases and you get the time complexity easily okay now we switch to a program where or you, you can say a piece of code is there we will write we should know how to write the uh, recurrence relation from the recursion okay this is a recursion why we say it's a recursion is a function within that function we are calling the same function two times but by, by by saying two times we cannot say it's a big of two we cannot say though we cannot say how many times the function could be called we have to write a mathematical model that mathematical model helps us uh, to solve or uh, to go for a solution 
uh, while finding the time complexity or the space complexity. Anything, any complexity if you want to find, you have to write the mathematical model of it. Okay. Next is print function is called, and within that, how many times it is here we can say for loop is used, and we read in the previous lectures for loop will run based on the stopping criteria as well as the increment and decrement operator that we know so number of times it will run based on the condition we can tell but here is no such conditions written how many times the function is getting called we cannot write we even don't know how many times it is running but it it has to follow certain rules though it is not following any rule we are actually maintaining a rule so if condition if if is there so n is greater than 1 then only for loop and everything will run let us take let us take while uh, writing the answer let us take this is your t of n t or p q everything you can write but t represents the time we are actually taking and n represents uh, that the variable actually we are passing through okay the representation of, of a formula like uh, the function in mathematics actually we are writing in this way we are actually passing to any value and this is a function here also the same as for the computer science you can say though it is unknown for us we can say the combinations of every single statement will be our time complexity then we can say finding out the space complexity is easy for us in the previous lecture we studied but time complexity in recursion we cannot because uh, it's it's based on the number of times it is calling though we cannot define it that's why we are going for finding it e one by one here if condition is there as for the previous lectures we studied if condition is running for one time how if will ask you whether it is correct or not if yes then go yes or no two options so definitely two options here limited us so limited means only one will be picked from it so the constant time it will be running for the constant time means one time you just pick and you ignore those things if you want to include also it will take one time but it's better you can ignore this now for loop is used that we know for loop though it is using for loop it is starting from zero to i plus plus and it will check if i is less than n or not so that you have already read in the previous videos i'm just writing it n time it is learning okay because for loop uh, we started from the zero then it will be added one 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 and like it will check it will stop once i is greater than equal to n then only it will stop and if you want to write one more time to check the stop condition also you may write not an issue but write for for checking the stopping condition to stop that one we are running for plus one time okay so here so in total in general i'm just writing it n times so you can write n uh, not an issue okay next though it is a statement written outside the for loop statement is always running for one time okay next though we say print n print int n or print n we are just supposing for it or assuming that it is running for t of n time so here it is written n by 2 you just simply write it now n by 2 not an issue because for print n we are writing t of n then for print n by 2 you are writing n by 2 not an issue like this another print n time also being written so here you can write it in this order not an issue so this is how we have found out the time for this within the box so if you add everything this will tell you the t of n the total time it will take is now you add everything inside it 1 plus n plus 1 plus 1 plus t of n by 2 plus t n by 2 okay i'm just adding within that to find t of n okay now i'm simplifying it t of n equal to 2 t n by 2 because 2 times n by 2 and n by 2 is using now n plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 these are the constant better to remove that one 
or if you do not want to remove you place right at 3 not at okay next again i am simplifying by removing this to n by 2 plus n condition is if condition if if n is greater than 1 then only it will run otherwise it will not run so we say this is our partial correct answer we have written this is not a total correctness and total correctness is needed okay so if condition we know then else part will be you have to write the recurrence relation will be in this way by saying suppose the at the end you are ending with some value always remember whenever you are writing if this is not correctly being mentioned with the best condition if not mentioned the best condition for division is it's better you write one why and how in next videos you will definitely get it because ultimately when you are assuming in future it's division so it will be multiplying with the one then only the correct value will be represented if zero will be written so there will be a problem there might be a problem because constant though it is multiplied with a constant not no such problems we can expect but one for a mathematical point of view that could be a better option okay? if n equal to one the best condition could be one because in, in future iteration that time you will get to know why, why i'm writing one okay because in future n by 2 to the power k will come so one will be multiplied 2 to the power k if you're taking zero also we shouldn't say it's a zero but it could be a constant that time might be some mistakes could be appeared so that's why to avoid such mistakes we are just writing it one okay now t n by 2 plus n you can say if n is greater than 1 or sometimes uh, if 1 uh, n equal to 1 or sometimes it is written as otherwise also okay now this is your recurrence relation okay this is your recurrence relation and there are type tip uh, there are two types of recurrence relation though we are actually dividing this one this is uh, called as division division function and sometimes you can in future you'll, you can uh, be looking like t n minus 1 plus 1 suppose this type of function you can see so it is decreasing function could be so we can say it's a a recurrence relation but decreasing function okay so decreasing function means we are actually uh, uh, degrading or the you can say we are actually coming towards the base condition you can ask me why division and decreasing we have seen many times the main reason is though we are actually reaching towards base condition base condition in general will be looking like this will be looking like this okay so this type of base condition you are actually saying nowadays so base condition is less than the functions which we, uh, which is there so we are actually reaching towards the base condition to to reaching the base condition only two things could be helpful like suppose you are having a greater value suppose 10 and you want to reach to 1 suppose this is your base condition Marlo, take it. base condition for the timing thing is for your base condition and you are having a problem this is your problem and you are actually trying to reduce it towards the base condition why this condition is needed the main reason of using the base condition is suppose uh, something is a, a, a bigger problem for you you are thinking that no I cannot do but if anyone is telling you no, you have to do by hook or by crook. I have you have to submit within two days. So that time you will think to complete it. By any way, you are trying to complete it. Means you are trying to understand the problem. While you are understanding the problem, you are using the basis. Like sometimes, uh, like when when you are actually completing your tenth, uh, the the thing is like you should know the base of eight. You should know the base of class nine, class eight. Then only you are reaching to base ten. Like this, the bases are actually being piled up so from the base actually we are learning the things if a problem is bigger then we are trying to reduce it towards the base condition because base condition we know it is one okay now suppose from 10 as a problem you can reduce if you are using uh, like you know division like suppose i am 
using 10 by 2 or 10 by 3 something that I, I am using so I can reducing towards 1 suppose I am writing 10 by 2 it is 5 means I am approaching towards the base condition okay if I am writing 10 minus 2 it is 8 somehow I am approaching towards the base condition if you are saying multiplication in multiplication and addition if I am adding 1 so I am outside the 11 like I am, I am going far and here also suppose uh, uh, suppose you are multiplying uh, multiplying 2 it's 20 and here 10 plus 1 is 11 anything these two operators we are they are not helping us towards the best condition rather than they are actually away us to uh, from the best okay like we, we cannot reach to the best condition that's why these two these two functions we are not using the main function we are using is decreasing another is division this is why we are using division function and decreasing function though we are actually reaching to the base condition it helps us to reach to the base condition that's why we are using these two functions you may have seen always t of n equal to t n by something okay here also you can see t n minus something minus will be there division will be there that is why we are using okay i hope it is understood by you if any problem you can message below okay Thank you all of you. Have a good day.